In today's video then, I've uh, got hold of a uh, 5 GHz Wi-Fi antenna that I uh, really want to take a look at. I want to take a look at the inside of this because it's a 5 dB antenna and I want to see how they're achieving that. Now, I've got it hooked up to the network analyzer so I thought we'd do this uh, first before I uh, tear down the antenna. Now, the one gripe that I have got with this is the advertisement for this also claims that it works at uh, 5.8 gigahertz for FPV which is a bit of a stretch but uh, I'll show you the output on the network analyzer and uh, it does look a damn nice antenna for 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi so this is the output on the network analyzer then and here we've got the cursor centered on the lowest point here which is uh, 5.1 gigahertz now although we call 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi 5 gigahertz it actually works over quite a broad range and uh, most routers are set up to work quite close to 5.1 gigahertz and we can see we've got this beautiful response here and it is wide enough to work at uh, 5 gigahertz and uh, probably just almost up to 5.2 gigahertz in this dip here either side of here but uh, if we go over here and this is about where uh, 5.8 gigahertz is we don't get the same response so there's no way that this antenna would work at 5.8 gigahertz and that's my only gripe I've got about this because uh, just looking at the outside of this antenna it seems to be constructed really really well and uh, you know we've got a really nice output on the network analyzer so why the would claim in the advertisement that it also works at 5.8 I just don't know, they're just inviting uh, you know, negative comments for anybody who buys one of these. Although, because it's a uh, N-type connector, I can't really see anybody using one of these for uh, FPV. But I could see people using these for uh, security cameras, if they want to get a bit of extra range out of a uh, wireless security camera, because they're also 5.8 GHz. But with the N-type connector, I don't think I've seen many, apart from there probably is uh, some high-end very expensive security cameras that do have n-type connectors but for your average person who wants uh, a kind of setup in their home you don't really see them coming with uh, n-type connectors so as you saw on the uh, network analyzer on the output there this antenna is going to work really really well at uh, 5 gigahertz wi-fi now there is a bit of a shortage to be honest with you with uh, decent wi-fi antennas that work on uh, that kind of spectrum and I've seen a few coming uh, forward in the last year or so but still there's not a lot of manufacturers making these or not making them on eBay anyway and selling them at a price that we can all afford still a lot of professional systems that have always made antennas for uh, this frequency but uh, it doesn't seem to be filtering down I mean uh, this antenna here does work well but it does have a few shortcomings I mean for instance it's got an n-type connector which uh, most people in their home networks aren't going to use but uh, if you're going to set this up uh, as an outside antenna then uh, it will probably work uh, quite well uh, on a uh, outside setup and be pretty waterproof as well um, another shortcoming of this antenna is it doesn't bend like uh, a more traditional dipole antenna so you can't angle it in any way it's just fixed in that one position but uh, I really wanted to get hold of this to see what's on the inside because apparently it's a 5 dB antenna so if we go back to the 2.4 GHz spectrum this is a uh, typical rubber duck uh, Wi-Fi antenna that uh, a lot of people have and uh, this is uh, 2.5 dB in gain but uh, what a lot of people do when they can is upgrade that to a uh, 5 dB antenna and uh, you know this is works at uh, 5 dB it's a design that I've gone over in uh, quite a few videos now previous videos so I'm uh, wondering whether they've got this kind of design going on on the inside of this or something completely different in order to get that uh, extra gain to push it up to 5 dB so I uh, managed to get it out easily enough it uh, is just basically a uh, crimp on type end connector and they've just put some epoxy around there and uh, glued it to the inside of uh, the case here so it did come out pretty easily so as I said this is a uh, crimp on type 
um, end connector here but what they've done is they've connected it up and uh, they've done away with the uh, crimp on part of this and just gone ahead and soldered directly to that so then we've got this length of coax here and then basically this is the antenna here so just looking at the design then we've got the uh, ground plane here and that goes through some via stitching to the uh, ground plane on the back of the PCB here and then the, the rest of this is the driven element so we've got a quarter wavelength here which uh, if I measure that with the calipers is around about 15 millimeters now that's a little bit longer than what I make them at I uh, tend to go with the measurement off the top of my head I think it's 13.5 uh, millimeters but uh, then we've got the loading coil here and then we've got another measurement at the top here which is uh, 20 millimeters if I get it down a little bit more yeah 20 millimeters thereabouts so uh, we've got uh, 15 millimeters 20 millimeters and the loading coil here and as we saw on the network analyzer it is uh, has a nice frequency output at that 5 gigahertz but uh, I have seen this before when we've got the PCB uh, hertz in dipoles in and the measurements seem a little bit different and uh, possibly that is to do with uh, the metal that uh, a more traditional hertz in dipole is uh, manufactured from in fact let me get one I've got one uh, in storage to take a look at so this is a uh, hertz in dipole for uh, 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi that I made some time ago now I uh, made a few of these for uh, a customer who wanted to set up a uh, 5 gigahertz only Wi-Fi uh, network in their home and uh, as I say you don't really see many manufacturers uh, selling these types of things but uh, basically this is the uh, ground plane here and then we've got a quarter wavelength here and the loading coil and uh, if memory serves that's uh, a three quarter wavelength there and I've made it all out of brass and these worked really really well I think uh, what I'll do in a future video is uh, as I say I do think these uh, don't perform quite so well as their uh, all metal counterparts I'll see if I can set up some kind of uh, experiment to verify that idea that I've got but um, I do prefer these over the PCB ones and in fact measuring the ground plane it's a little bit uh, bigger than the first quarter wavelength on the opposite side of the antenna um, I'm measuring from here to uh, just uh, here and that's coming in at 60 millimeters then we've got this T piece coming out of here that uh, extends it a little bit more by a millimeter or so so I'm not sure what that T piece is doing whether it's kind of uh, bringing it back onto center frequency I don't know but uh, as I said you know th this certainly is working well at uh, 5 gigahertz but uh, as I uh, found out in a uh, video a couple of years ago now when I made a uh, development kit where you could uh, alter the uh, length of uh, these pieces of the Hertzian dipole on the fly I did find that uh, this ground plane here this first tube uh, did play a much bigger role in the center frequency of the rest of the antenna than I uh, previously uh, understood and uh, it amazed me how much uh, you know slightly small deviations in the length of this could have uh, an overall f effect on the rest of the antenna and I would have thought that the ground plane didn't uh, play that much of a uh, difference with this uh, design of antenna but it does I would have thought you know trimming away uh, from the top here and especially this part here this is the first quarter wavelength uh, trimming that down and making it shorter or longer would have a uh, much bigger effect on the center frequency operation of one of these antennas but no the ground plane plays uh, a major role in uh, the overall uh, frequency operation of one of these Hertzian dipole antennas and I still don't really know why uh, because there's not a lot of literature uh, around these types of antennas and um, most books will show you the more traditional dipole antenna with the two ends uh, you know either side at uh, what normally is a uh, full uh, quarter wavelength for it, whereas these because the capacitive antennas they tend to be shorter in their wavelength because they are capacitive so overall then I, you know for the money I think I paid uh, 
four or five pounds for this it wasn't a, a great deal of money and uh, overall it, it is a nice uh, little antenna it's certainly going to work for you i mean uh, they haven't gone to the trouble of having custom made parts made for this which would you know obviously hike the price up a little bit they've got uh, a simple crimp on n uh, type connector here that they've just stuck in the end of the case here and epoxied it in place but uh, it's going to make it easier for me to uh, put this back together again so you know if i want to use it in the future i can i would have liked to have seen more traditional metal construction here with a dipole but uh, yeah it's it's doing its job whether it can outperform a traditional metal uh, dipole or not i don't know but uh, yeah they've just used what they've got and uh, sold it into a crimp on end type connector there but uh, yeah for the money i mean uh, it's a working uh, 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi antenna, you know, it does what it says it does. And it's just a shame that they have to stick on the advertisement that it works at 5.8 gigahertz. And as I said, I don't think that's for the FPV market, that's for the security camera market, but uh, it certainly does not work at uh, 5.8 gigahertz. And because I know some of you will ask in the comments how well my uh, 5 uh, gigahertz Hertzian uh, dipole would do, on the uh, network analyzer here it is so you can see exactly how well that performs so everything's set up exactly the same as we did in the first test we've got a nice dip here with uh, my antenna that's uh, just over 5 gigahertz there so you know I aimed for more at the beginning of the 5 gigahertz mark remember that 5 gigahertz is uh, quite a long range but most routers uh, stick uh, with a uh, broadcast and receive signal right at the beginning of the 5 gigahertz frequency but you can change that on uh, most routers but uh, yeah that's bang on 5 gigahertz there I also get a uh, second uh, lesser response further over on this side that you don't get with the PCB one but uh, mine measurements are just slightly different to the PCB one but basically it's the same uh, Hertzian design if we uh, move the cursor and we can see there that's uh, five, 5.1 gigahertz there so that's where the uh, one that we looked at that's where its uh, best frequency response was but mine's uh, further down here but uh, you know I mean both antennas are going to work really fine at uh, 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi so that's just how well this one performs but I built this some time ago I think maybe uh, although I'll link in the description uh, the video that I did uh, probably five years ago now I think it's time that I uh, did an update video to that one and uh, you know show you how to make a uh, Hertzian dipole maybe try and go for one that's got something like uh, 8 dB of gain rather than 5 so if you did enjoy the video please uh, give it a thumbs up comments or questions uh, drop them below and hopefully you'll join me on the next one